Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Floor Planner. Yes, my name is Bob. And as I always say, I'm here for customer success. I'm here for you all. And I want to share with you the new features, the advances that have been added to your floor planner platform that were added last month, which would have been the last month of the year, December 2022. Um, as I mentioned, Floor Planner does keep evolving and these advances occurring every month. I want to show you where you can find them listed so you can be notified. Let's go ahead and take a look at our Floor Planner dashboard just for a second. And on the dashboard, if you go up to your profile tab in the far upper left-hand corner where these four squares are, that'll open up your profile. It'll tell you all about your specific user account. And then on the right-hand side, in the right-hand sidebar, there's a button in there that says new features. New features are listed from the most current feature, progressively preceding, um, going backwards in time, if you will. But if you want to see all of them, if you just go ahead and hit the more button in the upper right-hand corner of that new features tab, you will be sent to a different link. And this is where you can scroll through these really great, simple explanations of the new advances that occurred in the previous month and even all the way through the previous year. I'm gonna cruise through here just for a second to take us back to where we left off. There's, there's about eight different mentions in here we're gonna to discuss today and just cruise through these for a second. Where we left off last time, with the advances for the month prior to December, uh, we left off with the, the magic layout for Floor Scanner. Um, have you had a chance to review that? If not, go ahead and take another peek at it here. Um, this is a really awesome feature to collect your as-built dimensions uh, of a single room or entire floor of a house. Um, and it's just been extraordinary. We've, uh, we've been having a lot of fun with this. But let, let's actually see what we're going to talk about for these eight different mentions now. Um, let's just take these in order. Let's let's go backwards. Let's do this. Um, open 3D tours in Oculus VR. There is now a quick way to view your 3D tour uh, on any Oculus virtual reality headset. A new button will direct you to your Meta Oculus account. And when you put on your headset, for your virtual reality, you'll be able to experience the tour in VR right away. Let me just show you where that button is real quick. Um, going into my floor planner dashboard, if I go ahead and take a look at my exports tab over here on the left-hand side, and if I, you know, you can data sort all of your exports that are stored in the cloud by this upper right-hand corner button and go down to showing just the 3D tours. And these are my 3D tours. So if I just select one of them, I'll identify it. And you'll notice on the left-hand side, you'll gain an additional new tab, um, which will allow you to open directly in Oculus. I think that'll speed things up for you a great deal. Uh, let's go back to check the rest of our updates here. What's a second? Okay, more insight in your credit use. There's a new overview for credit transactions uh, added to your reports. Um, really, really clean, tons of data in there to talk about added or subtracted credits. Um, it's very, very simple. Again, I'll show you where that is. I'll go back to my floor planner account and, and get uh, over here to the left-hand side down to the reports tab and inside reports, credit transactions are listed right here. And as we noted, there's a new documentation on much easier to read, added and subtracted information for any of the reference you want to check inside the usage of your credits. Taking another peek back here at our updates. Uh, holiday decorations on the fly. <laughs> oh, yeah. I hope you had a, a chance to, to play with this. This was really something wonderful that the programmers put out there um, for holiday decorations. So uh, we know we can do room styles to create collections of furniture and such. Uh, it was an enhancement to the room styles that you were able for the holiday season to select your room, 
uh, by left clicking on the actual room space and on the left hand side, one of your options sure enough was to go ahead and decorate the room for the holidays. Um, I'm sure we're going to be uh, looking at our future holidays and see what else we can enhance down the road. Um, but now that we're past the holidays and into our new year, um, change materials in 3D. This we've been waiting for. Yes, and for those assets and those furniture pieces, uh, accessories that have options in there to change out fabrics and or to change out um, finishes uh, on their other items, uh, other parts that are not upholstered on these items. Um, you've been able to do those changes in your two-dimensional plan. And then you'd have to go back to 2D to change them out or go hop back to 3D. But now you can actually change these out in 3D. So let's take a peek at that again. I'll go back to my account, open up one of my projects. And I have one of those sofas in here that is able to change out materials. So uh, we've traced a background in here. I'm just going to turn my background off for a second with my B key. And here's one of the sofas that when you select it, left clicking it once, you'll see over here that in fact, we do have a change in finishes and a change in materials available. Yes, we could always do this in 2D, um, but we couldn't do it in 3D. So we go into the 3D view for a second. It starts with our bird's eye view. Let's center that. And let's take our little walking man in the upper right hand corner and go inside our room, navigate around with our mouse using our arrow keys to get ourselves into position and select the furniture again. And with the furniture being selected, you gain the left hand sidebar, left hand sidebar. You'll notice that with the fabric over here, sure enough, we're in the 3D view. We could just start fashioning and changing out the different material uh, based on the selections that are available to us through the collection over here on the left-hand side, including if they have the option for that particular item to change out the legs and the finishes on the wood legs there also. I think this is awesome. I think you're seeing more and more features uh, and tools given for the 3D views, uh, which obviously is where we do most of our design work. So we can make those decisions while we're actually viewing it in the 3D mode. So going back to our updates, new icons for 2D color modes. Um, one, two, three, and four. So let's also take a peek at those. We'll go back to, well, let's go back to our 2D view, upper right-hand corner. And here they are. Um, the placement is still the same. They still do the same thing they did before, but I think it's just uh, a little bit simpler in the icons that are utilized up here. If you remember the very first button over here, black and white, it is your black and white version of your two-dimensional document and an architectural uh, wireframe uh, line drawing. Also this two shades of blue up here, it's implying the fact this is color blocking. So remember, if you assign room types to your areas that you've drafted, like this one is assigned as a living room, that living room setting over here on the left-hand side under uh, room type up here at the top has a color identification associated with it. Just take a look in here, all these color blocks here, this tab up here when activated and the room types being assigned will actually go ahead and show those colors uh, in your 2D representation. Um, then the last button over here is actually showcasing the materials. So if I go ahead and select that as it is right now, this is showcasing the materials that you placed on your floor and also so any materials associated with the assets um, and your three-dimensional furnishings. Again, black and white line drawing and the color blocking. And then of course the materials. And let's go back to our list again. Next up here, um, improved snapping for selected walls. With the shift key, you can select multiple walls rooms to delete, rotate, and move in a group. Um, this month, we've added a bunch of new improvements to the way this workflow and select your snap in your walls. Uh, if you're not familiar with using your shift key, it's extremely valuable. So let's just uh, hop back again into this model just for a second. 
And remember that if you are using your shift key to create a selection window, right now we have furnishings inside here. So if we make a shift and left mouse click and drag out a selection window, it is going to grab all the furniture and fixtures inside that room. It'll group them together, and then you can, of course, move them around accordingly in a grouping. Um, you can also copy this grouping inside the same design or delete what you've actually selected. Now, if you want to actually grab the structure inside here, you can go ahead and make sure that the furniture is either moved out of the way, deleted, or just turn it off. So go into the 2D settings tab in the upper right hand corner, which is also one of those new tabs, by the way. Um, but settings has always been there. So let's go ahead and go to the furnitures tab. Furnitures tab, we can go ahead. There's the toggle switch right there for showing the furniture and also the fixtures will turn it off. When those are turned off, although they're still there, they're just not seen to, uh, we can go ahead and hold the shift key and you're gonna notice that we can go ahead at that point and we have the actual room selected. It'll select the walls, ceilings, and floors. Um, if we chose to at this point to make a copy of that, we can go ahead and allow that to snap to the neighboring room to make a side-by-side -side room, depending on what it is you're trying to create. And the new snap features also to the corners. Um, I think you'll find this very valuable um, as you're trying to make easier duplication. So the shift key for selection, either furniture and or selecting structures and these new snap features to go ahead and very quickly mass produce um, or relocate, move these items. Um, this also works really nicely if you're trying to change some uh, standard settings of those particular walls. If you hold the shift key and, and select your entire room, you notice on the left-hand side, you can see there's the thickness and wall heights. So that's how you can select more than just one wall at a time. And let's go ahead and turn our furniture back on for a second. And our fixtures. Okay, so let's go back to our updates again. And just these extra notations, really not necessarily a new feature, but uh, yeah, back in December 2022, we were all, of course, floor planner and our team, we were all wishing you uh, very happy holidays. We all had a great one. And of course, <laughs> one extra wish for you all is that, you know, welcome to 2023 and our appreciation for you all being with us and the floor planner community and we look forward to a really great 2023 hope you can keep coming back for these webinars that are recorded and also uh, our live webinars that we conduct on tuesdays and thursdays to keep sharing with you the latest and the greatest advances with floor planner look forward to seeing you all soon hope you uh have a very prosperous and enjoyable new year and have fun floor planners right here for you Talk to you soon. Thank you.